more than 50% of Asian Americans believe that significant loss of memory or cognitive decline is a normal part of aging. And I think that that's, that's not only present in, within this population, but just, I think, worldwide, but specifically in this population. And then also almost half. 46% of Asian Americans say that they are concerned about developing Alzheimer's or dementia. So it's a huge concern. It was but, a huge uh, concern, but only what's reported is 18% mm-hmm. actually will get it. That's interesting. Welcome to Aging in Style with me, Lori Williams. I'm an optimist by nature, and I believe you can follow your dreams at any age. My grandmother's journey with dementia ignited a passion in me to work with seniors. I've spent the past 13 years learning about seniors and aging. In my mid-50s, I followed my own dream and founded my company, where I use my expertise to help seniors locate housing and resources. On this podcast, we cover all aspects of aging. Join us each week to meet senior living experts and inspirational seniors who are following their dreams. The fact is, we're all aging, so why not do it in style? Hi, welcome back to Aging in Style. Today, we have one of our favorite guests from the Alzheimer's Association, or she she is our favorite guest, back on Tanisha Tyler Carr. She's the Programs and Services Coordinator for the Alzheimer's Association Dallas and Northeast Texas chapters. We are going to be discussing a really interesting, something I hadn't even known about through the Alzheimer's Association, but it's the Asian American and Pacific Islanders, or they call it AAPI Awareness, and May is actually AAPI Awareness Month. And we're going to go over some of the facts and figures that came from the Alzheimer's, the big report they do every year. This was from the 2022 report. And this report, they talked about different statistics, facts and figures and things for Asian Americans and how they are affected by Alzheimer's. So welcome to Nisha. We're so happy to have you back. Thank you for having me back. Yes, absolutely. Well, let's kind of jump into this report. And I'm, I'm really interested to learn more about this. Absolutely. And this information we're going to be talking today was pulled specifically from our 2021 special report. Okay. So this information is accurate and up to date. And last month we talked about our 2022 Alzheimer's disease facts and figures special report. And hopefully if anybody has not uh, been able to look at that from the last podcast, if they have not been able to utilize a resource, we'd love for you to go to alz.org forward slash facts, F-A-C-T-S, to look at that report. Excellent. And you said you can find all of this information online as well and see absolutely, how it's absolutely. broken down for um, Asian Americans. So absolutely. So tell us a little bit about what, what did they find when they did research on Asian American population? And I know that they're less likely to get Alzheimer's, but tell us about some of the other things that they found. Absolutely. By looking at the information from our 2020 facts and figures report, Asian Americans are less likely than other groups to have Alzheimer's. Only 18% of Asian Americans, uh, however, are aware of mild cognitive impairment. And that's something that was a big eye opener and lots of information about MCI in our 2022 facts and figures. And, you know, mild cognitive impairment, as we talked about our MCI, could uh, be a early stage of Alzheimer's if its symptoms or the diagnosis is due to Alzheimer's disease, which this can make it harder for individuals and their families to recognize symptoms and seek professional care because these changes can be so subtle. And, you know, it almost seems like, you know, normal aging that we tend to, you know, classify as normal aging, forgetfulness and things like that, which we know anything that is so severe, like symptoms of mild cognitive impairment, even uh, though subtle, are still not a normal part of aging. So um, just a few quick facts and figures as we looked at our AAPI uh, population, our Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders population, one in four, 20% of Asian Americans report a lack of support, family support as a barrier. And almost 45% of Asian Americans believe that medical research is biased against people of color. Hmm. And we had talked about this before. And then right before we started the podcast, that kind of boils down to clinical participation, right? That we're only seeing white men for the most part in these studies. And so we need to have women, we need people of color to participate Mm -hmm. in these clinical studies so that we have better data. 
No, you're absolutely right. That is the importance of, you know, this data. And there's just a huge mistrust of the medical community and just unfortunately, because of egregious acts in the past and just misuses of population of color when it comes to clinical studies. Traditionally, people are very, very, very you know, wary of being a part of exactly it. Yeah, I get just that. because of systematic racism and discrimination that, you know, people of color specifically uh, ex- have experienced over their lifetime in the healthcare system. So that can be a huge determinant. And the Alzheimer's Association is always educating populations about, you know, just letting them know that, you know, those type of things cannot happen in this day and age, that there are so many protections in place. There's a review board for a lot of these vetted, valid clinical studies where um, it's equal opportunity as well as there's so much support and protection so that those things don't happen. But it is definitely still a concern. You know, there's a huge stigma against participating in clinical trials. Mm -hmm. And we were talking before the podcast started, just because, you know, I just, I have questions, (laughs) as I'm sure we all do. And it just made me wonder, okay, so if, you know, Asian Americans less likely to get Alzheimer's, it makes you wonder, is it possibly their diet? Could it, you know, what could it be? And we, we really don't know because, we don't have these studies, so we we really can't say what it is. So well, and exactly, and, and you know, we have to think that this is based on reported information from mm-hmm. these surveys. If we had more people participating in these surveys, if we had more people who were vectors of data, just there's so much research that has to be done, we would have a better idea. And like you said, that just that's based on people of color and also women being very present as far as vectors of information for collecting this type of data so we can understand what these challenges are, so we can address these health disparities and understand what they are, but also understand uh, why some populations are more at risk than others. Mm -hmm. So it, it all goes back to having more participation. Absolutely. What are some of the other facts that you've discovered More than 50% of Asian Americans believe that significant loss of memory or cognitive decline is a normal part of aging. And I think that that's that's not only present within this population, but just, I think, worldwide, but specifically in this population. And then also almost half, 46% of Asian Americans say that they are concerned about developing Alzheimer's or dementia. So it's a huge concern. It's a huge uh, concern, but only what's reported is 18%. Mm -hmm. actually will get it. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. And once again, this is based on the information that we have. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what are some ways, I mean, I guess doing podcasts like this, you know, I'm just thinking of ways that we can get information out to people to participate in these studies so that we have some better data and to encourage them to go to the doctor when needed and instead of, you know, the fear that they are going to be discriminated against, which, you know, I understand based on on history and all, but what are some things Mm -hmm. that we can do? The things that we can do is uh, specifically just really to address those concerns, going to the doctor will always, you know, going to advise you to go to the doctor and making sure that you are taking care of yourself, making sure if there's any changes in your health, especially your cognition, your memory, your thinking skills to go see a physician and also advocate for yourself, not to be dismayed or dismissed if someone thinks that the changes you or a loved one are having are just due to normal aging, but really advocate for yourself, really educate yourself about the warning signs, really Mm -hmm. educate yourself about mild mild cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's disease, and the other types of dementia, really educate yourself about the warning signs and making sure you're going to see a physician and then also taking a step further and getting a referral to a neurologist. Anyone who specializes in geriatric medicine, whether that be an internist, a geriatrician, but someone who specializes in geriatric medicine. Mm-hmm. And we talked about this last month that doctors may be more prone just to say, oh, it's you know just part of aging or getting older, but mild cognitive impairment is a thing. And it is something that has come out in the 2022 Alzheimer's disease facts and figures. So if you didn't listen to last, last month's podcast, go back and listen to that one because we broke down the facts and figures report and talked about that. 
And so often when I talk to people, they say, oh, you know, my dad's 80. He, of course, he has some memory loss or some confusion. Mm, That's not necessarily normal. (laughs) So we really need to, as Tanisha said, investigate that further and get to the doctor, to a neurologist to find out what actually is going on. I wanted to also discuss something else that I thought was very interesting in this report from the 2021 Facts and Figures. Once again, based on the information it, you know we have, it says that Asian Americans are less likely than other groups. And that means less likely than other groups to have Alzheimer's. Specifically, when we talk about Korean Americans, they may be more at risk for developing Alzheimer's disease through lifestyle factors, such as high levels of alcohol and tobacco use. Language barriers for some Korean Americans may limit access to health care and health insurance. Oh, okay. I had seen something, and I'm glad that you touched on that because it caught my attention because my daughter is adopted from Korea. And so it's interesting to me. So it's really more like lifestyle here in America for them and lack of communication. A language barrier exists, you know, for those Mm -hmm. who are, you know, specifically in this population who they're not native English speakers. Mm -hmm. So it could definitely be a barrier. And then, you know, those lifestyle factors that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a big, big part of it. If you've listened to any of our podcasts we've had recently, everything really boils down to lifestyle, exercise. All of those things are huge factors in protecting yourself against so many things that happen with aging, correct? Mm -hmm. All of these things are definitely important, just really working on that. And then what I also thought was very interesting in this report, uh, perceptions of clinical trials, almost 90% of Asian Americans trust their healthcare providers, but slightly over 54% of Asian Americans are not interested in participating in clinical research because they say that they do not want to be guinea pigs. And this is also oh. something that if you look at other populations of color, specifically African Americans, you know, say the same, not mm-hmm. being a guinea pig. And this is, you know, I think a universal stigma that people have when it comes to participating in mm-hmm. clinical trials. Yeah, I get that. But by not participating, then we don't get the most accurate data that is going to help us to find out what is causing it or, you know, come up with ways, you know, what risk factors are and, and what we can do to cure it. Ultimately, that would be the goal, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's just one of those things of really just the importance of understanding these types of facts and figures, understanding the connection within certain communities uh, based, once again, on these interviews and surveys. And then also really educating people about, you know, just the safety procedures and the just the phenomenal work that has been done in the area of clinical trials to be more inclusive and Mm -hmm. the work that the Alzheimer's Association is doing to also address those healthcare disparities and just perceptions of clinical research, you know, like partnerships that we have. We have partnerships with our Asian American Pacific Island community that includes our National Asian Pacific Center on Aging, NAPCA, Uh, is a national partnership and it's just really committed to really helping people in the AAPI community really understand their risk for Alzheimer's disease and other types of dementia and to address some of those stigmas and those cultural concerns. Yeah, excellent. Is there a website for NAPCA or is that through the Alzheimer's Association as well? You go to ALZ.org and you would go to help and support If you go to ALZ.org, at the very top of the page, you have this purple line and there's different tags. You would go to help and support. Then you would go to resources. And when you scroll down, you'll see the Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in Alzheimer's page. Excellent. And I think by having an Awareness Month, the AAPI, Asian American and Pacific Islanders Awareness Month, I think that is huge in letting people know that we see you and we are getting you this information and we we want you to be involved in this and, and come and learn more and to participate in studies. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it is important to to know that the Alzheimer's Association and other organizations that we partner with have a huge, huge, huge commitment to making sure people 
of all ages, genders, nationalities, orientations, no matter where you live, no matter who you are, that you understand your risk for Alzheimer's disease, you have resources, and that you can seek help and care in the health system with culturally competent providers that are able to assist you if you are in need. Excellent. Thank you so much, Tanisha. I always appreciate you and your knowledge and um, for coming on our podcast each month to share with us. So we're going to have the link to the Alzheimer's Association, specifically to the Asian American and Pacific Islanders that Tanisha had mentioned so that you can go there. And thank you as always for being on. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Of course. Was there something else you wanted to share? No, I just wanted to thank you for having me and also just to once again, let everybody know if they would love to get in contact with the Alzheimer's Association and talk more about what we've talked about today, get any local resources or information specifically about their situation and talk to someone confidentially. They can reach us at our 24-7 helpline at 1-800-272-3900. Excellent. Thank you so much. And we will put that information in the podcast as well so that you have it and we'll have it on our our website also. So please share this episode with your friends and families and neighbors, subscribe to the podcast, and then you can also find all of the podcast episodes either on Apple or Google, wherever you get your podcasts, but also you can find them on my website, which is lauriewilliams-seniorservices.com. Thanks so much for tuning in and we will talk to you next week. Bye-bye. 